What's up everyone, Eric here from ES Invest and I'm working with my friends at Bar Chart to introduce to you COT reports. We're gonna talk about what the COT report is, how you can use them, some important details for them. And then at the end of the video, we actually have some tips and tricks that's gonna lead into a second video that's gonna dive even further on the topic. So with that, let's jump straight in and as you know, where would we be without a disclaimer? I am not a part of Bar Chart. They are just some friends of mine and I love working with them in their community, sharing information. I'm just a dude on the internet. So you should not take anything I say as financial advice. With that aside, what is the COT report? Well, it is the Commitment of Traders Report and it's by the CFTC. It's published every Friday at 1530 Eastern time for the non-military types. That's 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And it's a snapshot of classified trading groups as of Tuesday of that week. And we're gonna talk about what these classified trading groups are right about now. But first, we need to take a look at what are the COT reports. That's the reason why there's an S is there's actually four different kinds of them here. We have legacy, supplemental, disaggregated, and trades in financial futures. This is also known as TFF for short. And let's take a look at what these are. The legacy contracts, this is kind of what you're used to seeing most of the time, the legacy report. And this is looking for open interest that has greater than 20 qualified traders that are above the CFTC threshold for trade sizing. So these are going to be um, typically larger positions being seen or aggregated in. They're going to be broken out into long, short, and spread positions. Really long and short are what's most important to us here because that's where we're trying to pick a direction, whereas spread positions sometimes can be used for all different kinds of things, which leads into the third category here. This talks about the classified trading groups. So we have non-commercial, also known as NCs or large speculators. Then we have commercial and non-reportable positions. The non-commercial is super important to you. And the reason why is because these are the people who are interacting with the market with the purpose of making money. Whereas commercial groups, slightly different. A lot of times this can be a business, maybe they have planes and they need to hedge the cost of jet fuel. So they're using futures to hedge the cost. They're not necessarily trying to make money, but they're just hedging risk. So a lot of times commercial groups have other ulterior motives when they're making their positions over time. And it's not always just for the sake of making money like the NCs. This is why this group is so important to us. And then non-reportable positions is small people. That's like most of us as retail traders. Definitely don't wanna use us for a lot of information. So next up, we have supplementals. So these are gonna be agricultural commodity contracts. Again, this is broken out into non-commercial, commercial, and then index traders. I don't trade these too much, but this gives you, again, just better fidelity on different commodity style contracts. Then there's the disaggregated report. This one's pretty cool. It's kind of like legacy, but zoomed in a click further. And what it does is it breaks out commercial and non-commercial into these various buckets. So instead of for the legacy report where commercial is just commercial and then you're left to assume what the different actors are, in the disaggregated report, you can see who are producers, merchants, processors, so on and so forth. This starts to add a layer of complexity and some people like my friend Carly from DeCarly Trading, she's actually gonna be helping me with the second episode of this. This adds some noise and she actually prefers the legacy report. I tend to deal with the disaggregated and TFF. I definitely reference the legacy report, but nonetheless, it just goes to show that there's different levels of detail that are of varying levels of utility to different traders. And then we have TFF, which is financial slash treasury. So think of things like bonds, the three month SOFR rate, stuff like that. Then there's the indices and then currencies. And then you can see the different trading groups broken out here. Okay, great. Now we need to understand what this thing actually looks like. So I'm gonna show you, and it looks like this. This report on the right hand side is exactly what TFF looks like. And you can take a look at this for these reports for all those other different categories, the four categories that we ran through. But as you can see, it is 
kind of a bear to read. And this is straight from the CFTC. So if you are interested, they do have some pretty cool integrations and things like that, but it's not super user friendly. And we're missing some really important fidelity that actually our friends at Bar Chart do a great job with. So I want to walk you through now some of the Bar Chart tools for looking at COT reports. And then I want to share some specific ways we can use them to help guide our trading. So what you have here on the left hand side is what the COT report trading web page looks like. And then if you click on one of these, so in this example, I clicked on the e minis, this is what pops up. So you get a chart of the e minis. Then we have this table here, which is the um, COT report. This is the legacy, so kind of the simplified version. And then down below that, we have TFF. So you can kind of get two different views at once. And the cool part with bar chart, which we'll see in just a second, you can actually get rid of the noise if you don't want to see stuff. Because for example, here, the green line is what we care about. These are the NCs, which are, you got it, the large speculators. These are the people that we care about. Again, there's not to say that there's not efficacy behind seeing what commercials are doing for maybe some other hypothesis, but a lot of times they have other reasons why they're placing trades. So it can be difficult to understand if they're building a big position, is that because they're bullish or is that because they have some sort of business risk that they're hedging away? You really can't tell, but that's kind of the cool part. So if we look at one other variation of this before I pull up the web page itself, you can see that you can also grab kind of these summary tables. So in this case, on the right hand side, we have TFF. And as you see here, it says summary report. It gives you just a slightly different view of what you just saw in that graph form. And you can grab these for all different kinds of positions and specific products that you want to take a look at. And then there's also a detailed report where you can see this goes week over week and it shows the actual sizes, the nets of the positions and it kind of two different views. I think they both add a pretty decent level of information for us to tinker with. So what I want to do now actually is pull up the cot report itself from bar chart and I want to show you exactly how this thing kind of works for us. So again, maybe we pop in here, we're gonna look at the financial traders reports. We grab the E-minis and you can see that same chart that I pulled up populate here. But I wanna show you a few things. The first thing is we can change the time frame that we're looking at. That's one of the cool thing about COT reports compared to other things is that there's a lot of trading data and believe it or not, it's actually really important. One of the biggest issues retail traders have when they try to use this is they apply a retail trader methodology where you can completely enter and exit a position within minutes, right? Small traders, it's easy to get in and out. Whereas a lot of times when you're looking at these non-commercial large speculators, it can take them months to build up an entire position. So one of the best practices when using this is to zoom out your time frame quite a bit. And we're looking for extremes. We want to see when there is extreme levels, either to the upside or to the downside. So if we actually grab the go to cot chart, it'll kind of populate this itself. And then again, you can tinker with what we want turned on. So in this case, we're going to get rid of commercials. We're going to get rid of small speculators, and we're just going to have the NCs, the non-commercials. And you can see pretty clearly what this looks like. Now, this isn't an end-all be-all style of indicator, but it can be used in conjunction with kind of the rest of our tool set to come up with what we think may or may not be an accurate thesis given a point in time. And what I mean by that is, let's take a look at an example here where this clearly is an extreme, at least for recent time, early 22, and we can see that this was net positive. And then this position started to trim down, started to trim down more, trim down more. And while that's happening, the S&P 500 is falling. And then kind of the same thing to the inverse, where we started hitting these record net shorts in May of 2023. And then that drastically changed in June, where we started popping up 
quite a bit and same thing into July and we started seeing this rally up and out. So sure, there's a bit of armchair quarterbacking going on here where we can look back cleanly on a chart, but the point being is you can add this to a broader toolkit and that is exactly what I'm gonna go into the next vi video with my friend Carly from DeCarly Trading who specializes in futures. And we're gonna go into a ton of information on best practices, how you can use this, go through some examples. So be sure to check out that video when it comes out. But as per always, you can find me on YouTube at ES Invest or on Twitter at the same. Thanks for checking out the video. If there's anything that you really like about using in the COT reports, don't forget to drop that in the comments below so that other people can learn from one another. It's kind of a really cool way to cross share information. Until next time, be an outlier. I'll see you guys later.